So in the last video, we went over expressions and comments. In this video, I want to go over user inputs and how to do that in Kotlin. So let's get started immediately by going to our main. And inside here, we can just create first a print statement, which is going to say enter some text. And then right below, we're going to create a value of string inputs. And that's going to equal read line, which I believe is a Kotlin method. And that just means it will take whatever you input as a string and output it as a string. So we can just write under that, we're gonna write print line. And inside here, we're gonna write you wrote interpolation symbol plus the string inputs. And if we run that program immediately, you'll see that it's gonna ask you to enter some text. Then it's gonna read the text you wrote and it's gonna output it down here. So if we write hello, exclamation mark, it will say you wrote hello. And that's the first way to read text. But uh, if you want to also read numbers, you can definitely enter a numerical value and type convert it to whatever type you want. So you can do two int, let's click on play, and you wrote 12. It would say you wrote 12, but this would output it as an int. So you can actually use this value to do some mathematical equations. But be careful because if you add some text or any symbols that this does not recognize, your program will crash. So it's very important you make sure you write the correct symbols for the correct output. But now I'm going to show you another way to read user inputs and how to prevent the user from crashing the program. So the first thing we want to do is create a try block. And a try block essentially just tells the program to try whatever is inside the block. And if anything goes wrong in there, instead of crashing, it's going to create an exception and how we handle that exception will be determined by what we write in here. And usually this prevents an interruption in the user experience and how they use the app. So this is very important that you learn how to use try catch. So the first thing we're gonna do is create an instance of scanner. So we're gonna do value reader equals scanner. And it's gonna take the system input. And let's create a print statement which is gonna say enter a number. And after that, we're gonna create a value of number and that's gonna equal reader.nextint. And that means it's gonna take our scanner and it's gonna be looking for integers and it's gonna read that integer the same way we did uh, read line, except this is made for integers. And you can use that for next big integer, next byte. There are so many different methods you can use for this. So just pick a type, whatever you prefer. I'm just gonna do next int for the purposes of this video. And then right under we can write print line and then you entered number. And of course we want to catch this exception just in case the user enters something that is not a number because if you enter a letter or anything else, this program will crash because it will be looking for an int and you can't really convert a char or any other symbol to an int. So down here we're gonna write print line you did not enter a valid number. And also so you can understand what this is, we're gonna write print line and inside here we'll write exception and that's gonna be just an E which is gonna tell you what exception it was. So first let's go and click on play. And inside here, if you enter the number 12, you'll see it says you enter 12 and everything is perfect. But let's enter something else such as a letter. Let's do S. It'll say you did not enter a valid number, so it handled the exception in that way. Usually you can add another reader statement that says, please try again. So it will just loop this until the user inputs a valid input. Otherwise, it will just also print the exception, which says Java util input mismatch exception. So you understand as a debugger what is going on. And uh, one more example, let's just remove this whole catch statement so you can see the trouble we'll be in if we do not include it. So let's go and click on play. Now let's pretend it says you want to enter a number and you decide to type it instead of just inserting the number five. It's gonna give you this large exception, which says the same thing as before, input mismatch exception. And as a coder or a programmer, you will understand immediately that the user tried to enter something that was not a numerical value. It's our job to find a way to handle that. So I always like to use the try catch. And uh, yeah, that's actually all I wanted to talk about in this video. If this video was of use to you, please consider leaving a like. I will see you in the next video. Bye.